Welcome to CEO Check-In. I am just getting going here on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So hello, welcome to Monday. It's Monday again. Hi, Bianca. Um, this weekend was beautiful weather and also very painful and hard, right? We had a really bad week in America for social justice, racial justice, humanity. The death of George Floyd was devastating and the ensuing protests I know are on all of our minds and I'm sure that you know you like me were watching the news were wondering how we got to this place in America and how we can quickly get to a place where people don't have to fear for their lives just by walking out their door. Um, I'm actually in a mastermind group where we were talking about these issues a bit there are eight of us and we've been meeting ever since the quarantine started every Thursday night at eight. And it's a group that is white, African-American, Asian-American, and we touched on these questions of race and realized that even in this group where we have so much shared values and understanding and a lot of affection for each other, um, we didn't all know each other before we started the mastermind, but we're getting to know each other really well through that. But even there with that level of trust, we had a really hard time talking about race and it's certainly not incumbent on the women of color in that community to educate white women about what should be happening just as it isn't in society on women of color to educate white women or for that matter women to educate men on the injustices that we face so this really touches home for all of us very personally and i do want to share a mindset teaching around it that I'm hoping can be helpful if you're sitting with that same grief and anger and confusion that I know I am and the women in my group all expressed. And just to finish that thought, we are going to come back to talking about it, but when we tried to talk about what was happening last week, it was just so fraught and we decided we would all do some further research and then we're gonna to try to tackle it again this Thursday. So if in your own family or community you're having trouble finding the words to talk about what's happening, you're not alone. And the important thing is to keep finding those words, making the effort, being vulnerable. You know, we're all racist just by matter of being raised in America, right? There's a very long troubled history in this country that started with slavery that is part of our collective consciousness. So. That's something that I accept, that I hope that you accept, and that we need to all take on as a collective challenge to figure out how we can move forward in a more equitable way. So, sorry to start us off on this heavy note, but um, the protests were right outside my window this weekend. I was following the news. And, you know, back to the mindset teaching, when we're feeling grief and anger, which many of us are right now about George Floyd and all the other loss of life of African-American men and women in this country, totally unjustified, that it's very important to be able to name those feelings and to not try to just push past them. This is the mindset teaching now, that when you're feeling any kind of grief or anger or fear, just by saying, I'm grieving right now, or I'm feeling rage right now, or I'm super afraid right now, Naming those feelings is actually very, very helpful in terms of managing that anxiety. And it's also a time when we all need to speak up about these issues. So by naming that, you might be opening the door to someone in your family or community, having a conversation with you and helping you to get more educated. If you're a white woman or if you're a person of color, maybe you're really relieved to hear that someone in your community who's not a person of color shares these feelings of grief and anger and anxiety. So I hope that you will look to name those feelings and maybe journal about them. You can post about them online and social media. And let's get this national conversation going, not only to further society, but also because our mental health is at stake. Um, for people of color living with the anxiety that when they walk out their door, they could be accused of something, stopped by the police, treated with gross injustice is incredibly stressful. And I know none of us wants to live in a world that has that kind of a risk for any of our sisters and brothers. So yes, that is what I wanted to start with today is to please name these feelings and share them and talk about them. We have so much collective work to do around this. And um, 
Let's get our businesses back on track too. That's what we're here for with CEO Check-In. Um, of course, our mission at Million Dollar Women is to help 1 million women get to 1 million in revenues. 20 to 30% of our community are women of color. So we have very deep uh, connection to these issues and we are doing our part to close the economic gender gap, which has a huge race component to it. And we are so glad that we are in this struggle with so many others now in this country who are bringing awareness to these important issues of injustice. So I am gonna do some live coaching today. Um, I also wanna mention that now that we're heading into the summer, hi Rabia, thank you for saying that, and Maisa. Um, now that we're heading into the summer, you might have some seasonal issues to look at in your business, right? What is the summer like in your business? Maybe take a minute to think about what happened last summer. Was it a boom time for you? Was it a downtime? Certainly now with the quarantine still on, even though we're slowly reopening, whatever you did last summer, you're probably going to live some version of that this summer, but revenues will probably be down, right? That's what we're still seeing across the board. So I'd love you to do a little planning around that and make sure that you have thought about how you're gonna get through summer 2020. Now, maybe it's launching a new program. Maybe it's cutting back expenses. Maybe it's reaching out to a partner organization like Bianca's been doing and uh, creating a new partnership or like Rabia. Uh, she's been sharing a lot of amazing tips on social media and getting people in her network to know what she has to offer. But let's just take a minute and think about that. And maybe after this call, you could do a little writing on a piece of paper or in your computer about what happened last summer and what you can do to make sure that this summer is a positive one for your business. Here at Million Dollar Women, we have a cohort of masterclass launching, but we're also spending the summer creating a new Million Dollar Women coach certification program that I'm very excited about because traditionally summer's not a time when people are signing up for tons of coaching programs. So we always use summer to plan new programs. That's when I did the sales cure a couple of years ago was over the summer. Um, I'm also writing my book this month. So thinking about the seasonality of your business can be really, really helpful. And the more you start tracking that over the course of the year, the more you can plan for it and make sure that you're doing the right things at the right time. Okay, so hi B, good to see you today. Um, maybe we can check in with Rabia and see what has been going on now that you've been doing all this social media posting. You might remember Rabia and I did a, a little dare bet fist bump of like posting some things and I posted my article, you posted yours, hello. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you, how are you today? Uh, right. Important one, so I really appreciated your words. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. I feel like there there are no right words, but not saying anything didn't feel right either. So, thank yeah. you. Are you are you have, are you in conversations with people in your community about this? A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as a woman of color who you know have dealt I've dealt with this for many many years, and I think Will Smith or someone posted something that said the the. The violence isn't new, but the videos are, you know, um, so. It's, right. That's uh, sudden, suddenly everybody has a front row seat to what's been happening for hundreds of years. And let's let's only hope that this was the thing that tipped the, you know, us over the edge to actually make some real changes. Exactly. Yeah, yes. That's what my hope is. Yeah. So yeah. tell us a bit how it's been going with your posting. I've noticed how active you've been on social media. Great job. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, and so what, what would you say are a couple of your big ahas so far, just to share with others? You know what? We had a call just uh, before this, and I think one of the things I was like, you know, people are mentioning listserv, or I should do a webinar, or I should do X, Y, and Z. And um, I think there are so, it was good to talk with them because there are so many things I can be doing, um, but for someone who's fairly new to digital strategy and really getting my name out there, not everything needs to be done at once and not everything is for every type of business. Um, so so I think um, really being clear of my target audience is yes. uh, something that 
something that I'm like, uh, who am I trying to attract uh, into my client portfolio? That is such a great point, Rabia. And I think we all feel overwhelmed, myself included, with all the possible channels where you could be advertising, yeah. right? It's like LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, paid ads, unpaid ads, SEM, SEO, fix your website, do a LinkedIn live, right? It's like, there's so many things. And, and you know, sometimes you just have to pick your lane and stay in it, right? Like I started CEO check-ins. I'm still here. We are changing the format a bit that I'm inviting guests on now. And in fact, I have a guest coming on Wednesday to talk about podcasting. Speaking of one of the other things, and one of the other things we could be doing. <laughs> Right, one of, the, one of the other things. But the point is, I think that your audience is on LinkedIn, right? You're a coach of executives in, in the workforce, and we yes. know that they're largely on LinkedIn. There's no reason for you to jump over to TikTok, right? <laughs> So um, I applaud that. And the truth is, it does take this cumulative effort, right? Where after many yeah. weeks of seeing you, suddenly someone, oh my God, we need someone to lead this retreat. And else, all of a sudden it's you know a $90,000 job that came out of nowhere. When in fact, it came out of you, right? Offering up all this amazing yeah. content for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah. Totally. What's that, is that phrase, um, my overnight success took me 20 years to build? Or Absolutely. Like that? like, That's right. Totally. <laughs> It's so true. We only see what happens when, you know, the spotlight gets shined. Have you gotten some nice comments from people in your community or inquiries or anything like that? Yeah, you know what? I, I really appreciate it because um, people have commented on that it's polished and it does reflect my brand, which I'm, as you said, like executives, I'm, I'm very much targeting members of the senior leadership team. Um, so that, and also I'm trying to make the tips as practical as possible so it's not just random thoughts about leadership, which, you know, you can get anywhere, but, um, cause I love also how you start your, you know, with a mindset, like, and I always am taking notes, like what's one practical thing you can do. Um, so, so that's been, and I've had some folks try it out. They're like, you know what, this actually made me really think about what my intentions are or, you know, what, what is it about certain leaders that have been supportive of me in the past that I want to bring to light for other folks. So, and how does that make you feel when they say, Hey, I use that and that actually helped me. Well, and also, the, well, and the reason I asked how does it make you feel is that we also have to remember that as coaches or CEOs or whoever you are watching, you know, whatever you're passionate about, that during this time when we can't control what the market's doing, we can't control when people are going back to work, right? All we really have control over right now is our state of mind, staying positive, yeah. putting our work out there, continuing to be of service. And I'm, you know, a huge believer, as I know you are, that, you know, it will come back to us. We just have no control over when. So I love that you're doing something that brings you joy, right? Like Aaliyah, who's also in our community, who's um, a stylist, yeah. is starting up this really cool, I'm not going to give her name away because I'll let her, you know, premiere it, but she's starting something up to bring women together to talk about fashion and have community. And she's excited and it's bringing her joy. And right now, yeah. right, that means a lot right now. Like I do CEO check-in in part because it brings me joy to see you, Rabia, right? And to connect with people. I always look forward to seeing yeah. you here. So let's not forget that part, right? And all the like stats and the numbers and the this and the economy's down by 25%. Like we still have to wake up every day and feel good about what we're doing and feel joyful. And then we have so much more to give our communities and our clients, don't we? When we feel that way. We do. And you know, I have to tell you something about the timing. Um, just uh, this morning, I got off of a call with someone who had been referred to me nearly two years ago and kind of went MIA. I tried following up and um, I reached back out to her uh, just to kind of check in because it had been a while and we never really had a conversation. She was like, Rabia, this timing is incredible. Like, I probably needed coaching, um, you know, three years ago when we were, two years ago when we first talked, but I'm, I'm ready now um, to talk more about it. And she asked me for an overview. And that's something that I'm seeing where um, the timing and the need for people, it's not so much how do I become a better leader, but she's looking to pivot her career as a leader. And I'm doing a lot more like work on that. So oh, fascinating. You never know when something's going to land. 
That's right. And you just have to keep putting it out there exactly like you do. You know, I have actually reached out to all of my former coaching clients just to check in on them. And so I would say, you know, eight out of 10 was just calls to see how they're doing. And then a couple of them were like, actually, I'm doing this thing. I could use your help. And I didn't reach out to get new business, but it led to that. So you just never know, right? I think we can just, because what you seek is seeking you, as we always talk about here. (laughs) Wonderful. The other line you added to Ruby was, your job is to make yourself findable, which I have um, written down like right in front of me. So yes. Oh, I'm so glad. I like the addendum. Yeah, I'll have to hand write it on my framed picture on the wall. Yes, and for people just joining us, that's all about how your job is to really make sure that you're doing your marketing and putting yourself out there because people are looking for you every single day and you have to remember that and just be findable, like Robbie was saying. And you're doing an awesome job with that, Robbie, and it's always so good to start Monday with you. So thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Always great to see you. You too. Have a great day. Bye. All right, let's see if anybody else wants to go live. And I love, if you're just joining us, it's so great to hear how Rabia is continuing to add value to her community, posting to social media, checking in with people she worked with. And, you know, she's a coach, but if you have a company that makes products or does a service like Bianca, who is a, is a trainer and helping people stay fit, you know, it's all about that connection with the people you work with. And that is what's going to lead to more business, coming through this together, and coming through this with a healthy business, which is what I'm here to help you do. So let's see if anybody else wants to go live today. I wonder who Mayisa is. Let's see if she wants to go live. Um, We also have Lady Boss. If somebody is ready to go live, you can send me a little note. And if not, I'll just see who has a question here today. Uh, Let me see, Gaby Baby, hello, welcome. And uh, just a little reminder that we're now having guests on CEO Check-In, and I'm excited that on Wednesday, we're going to have uh, my producer from my podcast, Million Dollar Mind. If you've never listened to that, it's about successful leaders and the mindset shifts they made to become who they are today. So people who overcame really big obstacles in order to build a successful business. Uh, So go check that out. It's on Spotify and Google Podcast and Stitcher and everywhere that podcasts can be found. And uh, you'll hear some stories of people who overcame some really tough things and made some really great things happen. Oop, I think I just flipped that by mistake. Let's come back. All right, um, maybe B wants to go live. Hi, B. do you wanna go live today and tell us what's up? B runs Women Repair Zone and she is helping um, women to do their own home repairs. It's a great model. And I know she's creating some online courses and stuff. So just ping me if you want to go live. Here we go. I just sent you a go live request, B. Let's see if she's up for saying hi. Hello there. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, except for what's going on in the world. Yes, I know. Were you here for the beginning of the CEO check-in? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and I, I hope, you know, I know in all our communities we're trying to find ways to have these difficult conversations and to be part of this national movement because that is the only thing that's going to change things, right, is if we all speak up. We'll try to do that as a council against hate, which the mayor circuit about a year ago, um, which works on these issues, but it's, you know, it's, it's, there's still, you know, racism is such a you know, ingrained part of our society that people are, it's just, Are, were there protests where you are? There are. Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's in many, many states now. Well, let's keep, let's keep the conversation going in our community, too, because, you know, we are a very diverse community, and we want to make sure that everyone knows that this is not, you know, a side issue. This is a main issue. So thank you for saying that. Um, how can I be helpful today? What are you working on? First, catch everyone up. Did I, did I describe your company correctly, or you want to do an addendum yes. on that? <laughs> Okay. That is, you know, could be inside or outside, but they're, they need it to be able to show people what they're doing. And I keep on hitting up against that the technology doesn't really exist yet. And I'm kind of stubborn. It's like it's got to be out there someplace. I and mean, it is impossible that I've got one technology that doesn't exist. 
Well, why does it have to be wireless? I mean, do you have the option of um, having someone come film the person? Or do they have to self-film? No, because I'm doing it self-filming because it's social distancing. Okay. Of course, yes, that has to be the top priority. But B, at the same time, I saw this cool little segment on the news when I was in quarantine in Westport with my mother, and it was about this guy who was painting these beautiful um, paintings for people who were in the hospital, whose loved ones couldn't go visit them. And after this whole gorgeous segment, like a 10-minute segment, at the end it said, filmed by his nine-year-old daughter. <laughs> which made me realize, okay, you know what? People are getting resourceful. I mean, this was national broadcast television and they were just like, you're a nine-year-old, can film you. So I'm wondering if you want to ask the people who are working with you to have a family member film them. And you know, there are tripods that they could set up or hold manually. I got one of these ones where you can, um, I would go get it, but I'm afraid I wouldn't find it. It would take too long. But there's one, I'll send you an email with the link. But there's one where you put your phone in, and then it has a stabilizer. So you hold it, and it follows you around, and it stays very, very steady. Right? Oh, that. So that a nine-year-old could do. And I'm just saying maybe some of these people filming for you, just off the top of your head, do any of them have spouses or someone they're quarantining with? They do, yes. Because I think that would solve the problem. As long as someone else can film them, it's going to be a lot easier for you to find the right technology. Okay. That would definitely work. Super. Any, Thank you. Sure, my pleasure. Any, um, any, uh, any ahas from being in Masterclass? What has resonated with you so far from being in our program? Uh, a lot of different things. Um, but the one thing that I keep on um, honing in on is you know, the fear part. So when I find myself in like this morning, it was like, okay, I've got to be able to make this work. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you shared that. And by the way, you might remember at the beginning of this, I said if you're feeling grief or fear or anxiety, naming it is so important. And so just by you naming that, it takes a lot of the juice out of it, first of all. Right? Because when you say it out loud, it's like, well, of course I'm fearful. I'm doing something I've never done before. It's a pandemic. <laughs> right? You'd be crazy not to be a little fearful. Um, but I don't know if you remember the quote from my book, which is, have the fear and do it anyway. Do you remember that's that one? Exactly right. Yes. right? And that's all any of us is doing. Right? I don't care when you add three zeros to your revenues, which eventually you will. Right? You'll still have fears. I mean, I'm launching a million dollar women coaching certification program, right? During a pandemic. I have some fears about that, but I've just learned over the years, have the fear, acknowledge it, and just do it anyway. Because the truth is, no one's gonna believe in you more than you believe in you, right? So, well, although I believe in you a whole lot right now, but. Well, thank you. <laughs> I do, I'm excited. Well, I tell myself too when I come across those fears is that think of the things that you have done when you were afraid and you overcame those fears and you were successful. That's a great thing to do, yes, to look back and say, oh, wait, I've had this feeling before, and actually it worked out okay. The other thing you might try is a mindset tip I gave on one of these other CEO check-ins, which is an exercise called What Could Go Right. Were you here for that one? No, no. Oh, okay, this is a really fun one. I use this all the time myself. I use all of these myself, by the way. I use all these myself all the time. Um, so you take a piece of paper, and you just write at the top of it, or you could do it in your journal. I do it in my diary sometimes. What could go right? All capital letters, question mark. And then you list 10 things, but no less than 10 things that could go right. And, you know, it could be things like, I find a, a partner to launch this with. Um, it could be things like, I have twice as many signups for my, for my first class than I thought imaginable. It could be, um, I implement that tip Julia gave me about people's nine-year-olds filming them and it winds up becoming like one of the fun features of this that every single one is filmed by the person's child. Um, it could be, I make $30,000 more off of this new program and it's remote. You know, whatever you, you can dream up, but 10 things that could go right. And what's great about it is it gets your brain refocused on the positive and it starts getting your unconscious looking for those things, right? That's why I have up on my wall, what, I'm looking at it right now, what you seek is seeking you because that's, that's all I wanna think about every day, frankly, right? All I wanna think about every day is that women need my help and I have to make myself findable. Everything else falls from there. So when my brain gets all busy with like, oh, but you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you're not as famous as this person, no, that's, that's noise, right? 
What you seek is seeking you. You're doing the same thing when you do the what could go right. You're telling your unconscious, pay attention to this. These 10 things, go find them. And what's so cool, B, is I've been doing this for two or three years and I will go back and reread the things I wrote. And I always write thank you when I got it. And I would say like eight out of 10, it's like thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe two of the things didn't happen. But the, the lift right away from writing it is so huge that it's worth doing. You think you could try that? Absolutely. Awesome. I love it. And then we'll look back at it later. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. Well, thanks for jumping on today. And uh, let me know how that goes with the videotaping. I can't wait to see how it comes out. Yes, me too. All right. Bye, B. Have a great day. Okay, see you Wednesday. Come on Wednesday for the podcast thing, okay? We have a guest. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Uh, B is in Million Dollar Women Masterclass, and Rabia just graduated. Uh, and we have other women who are in our four month coaching program who are getting the help of my coaching, our mentors, our online curriculum. So if you need help or you know someone who needs help, a woman entrepreneur, please send her our way and we'll set up a call to see if this would be the right fit for her. It's just Maddie at JuliaPim.com. M-A-D-D-Y at JuliaPim.com. It was great to be with you today and start the week together. I wish you a very peaceful and productive week. And I will see you, well, no, just a couple of days, because I will see you on Wednesday when my podcast producer is coming on from Mouth Media Network, and he's going to talk about what it means to launch a podcast, because that's something people are considering doing during this time. And if you've ever thought about it, please join us. Oh, Maddie, thanks for putting your email in there. And a huge shout out to my chief of staff, Maddie. We were just talking this morning about when can we be in the same room together again, and we hope it's soon. Uh, but she's given me amazing support from her home in Brooklyn. All right, Mwah. have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye everyone, stay brave.